All right, YouTube, today I am going to take you through the advanced radio setup of the uh, new E-Flight uh, T28 1.2 meter that has the flaps and the retracts, the retractable gears. Um, yes, there's quite a few YouTube videos out there of someone setting up the radio, but I'm going to show you some advanced uh, settings today that may be a normal quick radio setup doesn't take you through. I'm going to show you uh, flight modes as well as throttle reverse, um, audio setup, and a couple other things. So let's get started. As you know, first step is safety. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this prop off. Anytime you're working with radio setup, it's probably wise to do this. Um, You'll see how fast it is to take it off. Taking it off is definitely worth a lifetime of a few missing fingers or some other injury. So as simple as this is, I think it's always the number one rule is to take the prop off anytime you're working with a first time radio setup. And there you go, it's that simple. All right, taking a look in the book here, um, there is always this uh, computerized transmitter setup page. It's really a good starting point um, if you're uh, new to the hobby or um, wanting to start with a basic setup and go more advanced from there. This is the place to start. I know a lot of the, the E-Flight stuff and a lot of things Horizon puts out. Um, we're going to be doing this on an NX8 today. You could do this on a uh, NX6, NX8, NX10. You could probably do it on the other ones. I don't have them but um, same concepts will apply using this page here in the manual you can pretty much figure most of the basic settings out um, we'll be going through each one today i'm not going to be showing the book uh, each time we go through these but long list here um, looking real quick i'm going to do everything on this page except right up here at the top it says high rates of um, uh, dual rates set high to 100 low to 70. i do that a little bit different and i will uh, show you what I mean by that when we get there. So let's get started. Okay, now that I got the radio set up to where hopefully uh, you can see the screen real clearly, uh, I'm going to take you through the radio setup. I'm going to try to do this without moving the transmitter so that you can uh, really observe what's going on here. Um, some pre flight things is obviously I'm on a P51D Mustang. It's one of the other planes we have that me and my son fly. But going in this, the first thing I'd recommend, especially if you're ever doing a YouTube video, is you go to the uh, system setup and scroll down to the very near the bottom. System settings. Scroll to the next page under system sounds. First thing you should do, and I would recommend this for anybody that owns this radio personally because this is extremely annoying and I don't like that Spectrum sends them default with this turned on, but this roller sound, you can see mine's on inhibit. It's not just for this model or this airplane, it's for the whole system. I'll turn it on and hear that beeping noise every time you scroll this wheel. That gets really annoying really quick because you use this wheel a whole lot, especially if you're creating a, a plane like I'm going to do from scratch. There's a lot of using this wheel and um, that is one of the most annoying sounds as you as you try to listen to someone speak over that. On a YouTube video. So with that inhibited you can see now that uh, scrolling the wheel doesn't make that noise and it's gonna make this video hopefully a little more enjoyable. Alright so the first thing we're gonna do, oh, let's start all over now, go to the main screen. Um, if you press these two buttons together or you can press here but this is a shortcut to press them together it takes you to your models that you have already loaded into uh, this transmitter. Uh, and you can see I've actually already done this, uh, the, the T28 Trojan uh, 1.2, but I'm going to do it again for you guys. And we're going to do it from scratch. You can do add new bind and fly on many of the E-Flight planes, and uh, they got all the basic settings we just saw in the manual are pre-programmed in. Obviously, I would recommend you verify the settings before taking off either way, but uh, we're going to do it from a new today. So we're going to say new model. Model type is an Acro or an airplane. Click create. All right. Now we go down to the. Now we go to uh, model select, and you will see I have one right there called Acro 13th, 13th plane. So let's add that. Let's just go into that. I think we're already in it, but 
Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, check the model type is on plane, which it is because we just created it. Then we go down to model name. And I would recommend changing the name to something a little more uh, descriptive. As you get more planes, you won't have any clue. You won't remember what Acro is because it's the default name on all these. So as we do that, I'm going to go T. Um, I don't remember where I set this setting at. I did change my keyboard to be more like a traditional keyboard like you see here. Um, they do have one that's just a scroll back and forth, but um, I actually like this one a little better. So it's personal preference. I'm going to call it a T28 1.2. I've already called one a T28 uh, Trojan 1.2. Uh, we also have the 1.1, so we definitely don't want to get confused at the field and load that. So uh, we will call this 1.2. the back button and we scroll up here to the corner where it says back now the model name has been changed aircraft type now this says uh, wing is normal tail is normal um, th this shows there's no ailerons and this plane does have ailerons so we go to wing and we pick this one and I know this is gonna get a little confusing so I'm gonna explain that here this shows you have a uh, one servo driving your ailerons and one servo driving your flaps. That's actually not the case on this plane. Taking a quick look, it has four servos. But inside of the plane, there is um, a receiver, and I believe it's a six channel receiver, which is not enough for each servo to have its own channel. So the plane itself comes with a Y adapter, and uh, you have both servos for the ailerons being powered out of one channel and both uh, servos for the flaps um, being served out of a ring channel. So as far as this transmitter knows, this plane only has one channel serving ailerons and flaps. So it looks like we have one servo for ailerons and flaps. Uh, just to show you, there are one C where you could have uh, multiple right here where you've got a servo for each one. But like I said, the, the transmitter does not going to know that the plane has a uh, physical Y adapter on the uh, power um, on the on the cords that go to the uh, the wires that go to the servo. So we'll leave that on one aileron, one flap. All right. Under next here, uh, this is something most people overlook or don't know about. If you under next, if you highlight the plane, you can actually pick a plane that looks a little more like maybe the plane that you have. Uh, the T28 has a big beefy nose. So I'm gonna see if I can find one that's got a big beefy nose on it. Uh, probably that one. It's got a little bit bigger nose. Uh, it looks like a T28. So that means on the main screen when it shows you a picture of the plane, it's going to look like that, which will also help you further differentiate your planes. Um, let's go down to previous, or you can just hit the back button. All right. Next, let's go down to channel assign. And we're going to set... Uh, may have to change this later, but I'm doing this from memory from last night. So we're going to change, leave auxiliary two on B. Um, what this is, is these are the channels in the radio. This is NX8. I've got eight channels. And what you're doing is assigning which, um, which switch on this radio controls that channel. You can check on every little switch. There is a little bitty letter you probably can't see on the video that tells you the switch A, B, C, D, E, and so forth. So on channel eight, we're going to change this to the knob that's up here on the NX8. We're going to change uh, auxiliary three to G. So one of the tricks to doing that is if you um, if you select it and then you just flip the switch you want it to be G. There we go. Once you flip it, it changes it, and then you click again, and now it's set to G. Um, we may have to come back and change those. We'll see, but I think that's correct. All right, so. Some of the other stuff I like to work on is there's a thing called center tone. So that is when this throttle stick gets up halfway. I don't ever like to look down at my radio if I don't have to. So I'm going to do lots of audio cues here. But uh, one of the things I like to know is um, what percent throttle I'm at. 
Um, I can obviously tell 100 and 0 because it stops out, but when I want to say about 50%, uh, I'd like to make a sound, and then I can adjust accordingly down a little bit to 40% or whatever. So to do that, we're going to come in here. We're going to say Switch Select. We're going to select the throttle stick. And then instead of Alarm Inhibit, we're going to change the alarm to, to, in my case, I like it to be on Voice so that I can pick what it says. And then I go down to Voice. And unfortunately, this is a very long list of stuff it can say. And I'm going to go ahead and show you there is a way to go say select category. And then there's different categories of things that you can um, you can you can pick if you know which category that stuff belongs into. Uh, it's certainly faster than scrolling through when you go to all sounds list. It is a very, very long list. But uh, if you don't know which category it's in, you can go to all sounds, scroll through until you do eventually find it. The one I'm looking for today, I think, is in rates. And I'm going to pick the word medium. So now, medium. I don't know if you heard that, I may have to turn it up. Medium. 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 Anytime I hit the center point, uh, the transmitter says medium. All right, let's go back. That's the one I really like to do. Don't care too much about ailerons and elevators. Don't need any kind of audio cues on those. All right, then under sound, sound utilities. Um, I don't remember what we do here. Um, let's see what's under these. Let's not let's not change these yet. Um, oh, that's sound utilities. That's to change and organize all those sounds into those categories. Obviously, don't need that for this plane setup. Um, palette utilities. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Not needed for this plane, but if you notice, my transmitter in the uh, picture is like a black and a green. I find it shows up really well out in the sunshine, which is usually when we go flying on nice sunny days. Uh, I will show you mine. So what I do is I have a um, global customized, which means it's my, and I use it across basically all my planes. To do that, um, on when you make a new model, under this model, you just pick between some of the default ones here. Or in my case, I pick the global customized. And now you can say personalize this model, which is change this model only or change the, the global customized palette, which is what I do. So I go in here and I'm not going to go through all these settings, but these are color settings like red, green, blue colors. If, um, if you pause, if you want to make it look like mine, not that you would, uh, you can pause the screen and, and uh, you can take a long time to go through and set all these colors just right. But uh, that's what mine looks like. And then there's one more page of settings I'll show you. And there's a few more settings right here. So if you like the palette scheme I have, you can pause the video and copy these numbers down. All right. That was under uh, palette utilities. Okay, so I think we're ready to go back to the main screen now. You can hit back, and then let's press on this roller bar here. And the first thing you want to do is go to uh, servo setup. In the manual, um, this is kind of a hidden, it's not really hidden, but I, it took me a little while to figure it out the first time I bought an airplane. If you highlight the word travel, these are the distance the servos can travel, 100%, all of them. If you click that, you can then change to different settings. And I don't usually mess with most of these. And in fact, I don't know what all of them are, but reversing, I do understand. It means the servo moves the opposite direction of the default. In this case, the book says the gear needs to be reversed. So you go to gear and you click it. And now you can see the little switch shows it's backwards than all the rest of them. And then let's leave this menu. So we just set that setting. All right, the next thing I do is uh, DR and Expo. This is where I said I don't exactly do what the book uh, says to do. It says, to use 170, I like to do something a little different. What I do is I first assign us, this is the ailerons that I'm on, control services. So I click the switch. Um, I set mine on this switch. Uh, it's up to you where you set it. These things are completely customizable. It's F, so with it there, I, I click there and it shows up as F. Then I click this again. Now ailerons are controlled by switch F. Now I switch this to the top setting, which is the highest rate for me. Rates 100%, and then I do an expo of 15. Let's take just a minute to talk about what a 15% expo is. So 
If you have zero expo, then if you move this, uh, this in the aileron in this case, if you move this stick to the right 5%, the ailerons go 5%. If you move the stick 80%, the ailerons go 80%. 100% is 100%. With expo on, that's not exactly how it works. It makes the first little bit of the stick a little mushy to where it's not quite as um, responsive. 100 still 100, but 1% is not 1% and 5% is not 5%. 5% is more like 3% and 10% is more like 7%. So what that allows you to do is when you want to make a realistic looking flight, or it also helps during landing, is when you move the stick just a little bit, the plane doesn't twitch. It's a little more smooth as the plane uh, changes its trajectory because uh, it's not, it gives you just a little more at the beginning here of of a feeling of a little bit of, I'm going to call it mushiness, but what it really is, is uh, 100 still 100 and 0 still a 0. But the first 15% is not really, the first 15% of the stick is not the first 15% of the uh, servo movement. So it just makes the plane feel a little more realistic and controllable and makes it where every time you just barely adjust one of these gimbals, the plane doesn't twitch in the air and, and look all unrealistic. So I do 115. And then I'm going to scroll down to the mid rates where I do 90. And this is personal preference. The book says 170, 107. And then for low rates, 70, I do three rates and I like 190. I also do 15% on this one. And then I'm going to go down to low rates, which would be pulling the switch down and change this to rate of 70, like the book suggests. And then I go ahead and put an expo of, you know, five. I probably would never even notice, but, you know, why not? So now if you go through it, I got 100, 90, and 70. I like that because I, I usually fly on, let's say, 90. And if I want to do some tricks and get a little more creative, I can go up to 100. And then if I'm coming in for landing or uh, panicked a little bit, <laughs> I can drop it back to 70. And things aren't so uh, drastic when I move the sticks. Now, uh, notice I only did the ailerons here on the screen. You have to also do um, all the control services. So you switch from ailerons to elevators. And let's go back to high rates and put that on 15. Mid rates. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I did that wrong. I apologize. First, you have to go to switch assign. And you want to assign the same switch so that you don't have to flip multiple switches. So now we got switch F assigned. Now on high rates, we have 100, and let's do 15 for Expo, and then let's do 90 and 15, and then 70 and 5. All right, elevators, now we got to go to rudder. Need to set the switch, forgot to do that last time, doing that now. All right. Now we're going to go 100 high rates, 100, 15, 90, 15, 70, and how about 5 again? All right, now you can test all that, 75, 90, 15, and 115. And then you can check your elevators, make sure they're the same. Check. And ailerons. And now they're all set up. And that's the way I do it. But like I said, that's a little different than the book. But I like to have a little more control. Um, it's, it's always using 170. 100 for the rate and 70 for the second rate would be fine. That's what the book recommends. All right, so we got done with DR and Expo. The next thing I want to set is throttle cut. Um, I think this is a huge safety feature, especially on electric planes. On electric planes, you don't hear the engine running when the motor stopped like you would a gas or nitro plane. So um, it's, you know, it's easy to forget and you bump this stick up by accident and that propeller comes right on every time. So this helps, uh, it's a second safety stop to prevent that. So we pick a switch. I pick this lower right switch up here. I don't want to really accidentally click it in the air. So I use this top right hand switch. I'm going to click it. It's switch H as you can see. Whoops, I accidentally rolled it. So we'll tick that again. H. 
All right, so now that we have H is, I like to say that um, down is when the throttle is active and up is when throttle cut is on. So as you can see, there's a little dot, I don't know if you can see in this video underneath here that tells you which position's which. So zero, position zero or down is what I would call the active. And then what I would call up is um, inactive. The book says set the inactive to negative 130. So let's take that to 130. All right. And now, as you can see, I can switch back and forth. But um, throttle cut is now at negative 130. And if you don't know what throttle cut does, I'm sure you do. It means is the three the switch is anytime the switch is up. That means um, this doesn't actually do anything, which is just a second safety when you're when you're dealing with electric planes. It's good for electric planes. All right, let's go back. Next, the book recommends initial flap set settings. So we go to flap systems. You need to turn that on. I use this switch, switch D for flaps. Okay, we've activated switch D. Now we can set it up. The book recommends um, negative 100 for the first setting. That means the servo will be all the way one direction. And that would be when the flaps are um, not down when you're in full flight, negative 100. Um, this would be what you call takeoff flaps. It's zero, and the book says set the elevators at two. Um, to tell you what the elevator is, that's an elevator correction. So sometimes when you turn the flaps on, the, the plane no longer flies level. Even if you're in level flight and you have your plane finally tuned to be in level flight, it's not always in level flight when you put the flaps down. So they've predetermined that you need to apply just a little bit of elevator uh, when the flap is down. And when you set that on two, that means you don't manually have to apply the elevator. Um, it will automatically apply 2% elevator. Now, when the flap is in what I would call takeoff flaps, the book says set this to 100. All right. And the book also says to um, set this at 2%. So we set that to 100. Okay, so the initial... Oh, and speed, the book shows it on two seconds. And I think that's how long it takes to move the flaps across that area. You don't want it to super quick. You want the flaps to look realistic and kind of come down and up like a real airplane would and not just be an instant as fast as the servo can go. So got that set on two seconds. All right, we're done with the flap set up. All right, the other thing that I think is super important with electric planes is timers. Now this plane right here can take up, I mean, <laughs> It can take a lot of different batteries. I'm gonna fly it with a 2200 uh, 4S and a 3200 4S. I'll probably do most of my flying with a 3200 4S. But let's just assume for a second that um, I'm gonna go back and forth and switch. So what I can do is I can set up timer one to be four minutes. I have it set that anytime the stick is over 25%, it runs the timer. Anytime the stick is under 25%, it does not run the timer. And you can hear, which I like this feature actually, uh, you can hear it beep, listen closely. All right, so now I know the stick's at 25%. And remember where we set the other one to say medium? Medium. Medium. So now I have a beep at 25% and the words medium at 50%. So it's going to give me a good indicator, especially when I'm coming in for landing, you know, and I'm trying to figure out without looking down at the, uh, at the, at the gimbals where my stick is. I've got some visual, uh, some audio indicators to let me know. All right, so we talked about having two battery packs. If you notice, you can highlight timer one. You can go to timer two. I'm wondering what this one is. Hmm, okay. You go to timer two. And let's turn it on. And I think we're going to do a countdown like the other. And then I'm going to leave it on five minutes. So I'm going to say four minutes on a 2200 and five minutes on a 3200. Now what I'll do once I take this plane out and fly it is I'll check my voltages after flight and... I'll adjust my timers accordingly. Um, some people's flying style would, would lead them to only have four or five minutes flying. Some people can probably get nine or ten minutes flight out of these battery packs. It really depends on if you're a 100% throttle kind of guy or, a, or a, a, a little bit more graceful. So what I'm going to do is start with four and five. 
What you'll notice now, I'm going to go back to the main screen for just a minute. I've got two timers. When I take this over 50%, they both run. But what will happen is if I'm running a 3200, when I hear the timer expire, I can ignore the first timer and wait for the second timer, once again, without ever looking down. Later in the video, I'm going to show it, show you how to make it where it'll always tell you how much time is left without looking down. It will just read you the time. But we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so back into where we were. We just got done setting the timers. And actually, that's the next part, I think, if I remember the, lit, the menu correctly. Um, we just finished timer. There's this thing called audio events. And so I'm going to go to one called switch settings. And I think this one's pretty important here because once again, I don't like to look down, especially if I'm at the airfield and there's multiple planes in the air. I really don't like looking down, looking back up and seeing two or three planes. So uh, if I can keep my eyes on the sky at all times, that is definitely the preferred choice. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, add a new sound event. I'm going to pick a switch, the button, the bind button, which I never use for binding. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to push that in, switch I. Now, I'm, I think you can pick either one of these because it's a switch. And instead of being on silence, I don't know what it's under. So I'm going to go to all sounds because I know it's near the top. Time remaining. Now when I press it. Time remaining, three minutes, 42 seconds. Time remaining, four minutes, 42 seconds. Yeah. So let me back out. I'm going to increase the volume just a minute. So you hit this backup button and then it highlights it up here and you can turn the volume up. Um, turn it back. Now let me press that button. Time remaining, three minutes, 42 seconds. Time remaining, four minutes, 42 seconds. All right, so it reads you both your timers and how much time you got left. So anytime you're curious and you're in flight, you just reach up, you hit button I, and she will tell you. Transmitter will let you know. All right, let's go to some more audio events here that I always set up. I think these are really good for not needing to look down. So we have one set. Now let's add another sound event. Um, I like to add a sound event for when the gear is up and down. So I go to this one. Now I use this bottom top left switch here, which is switch A for that. And um, I kind of treat it as up on the switch is gears up, down on the switch is gears down. So uh, right now I've got it up. And let's see if I can find this one because, um, like I said, it's a long list and I'm not sure where it's at in this list. Looking for something about gear. Looking for it. Hope I don't miss it the first time through. That's even a little more painful. All right, I missed it the first time through, so let me pause the video. I'll find it and be right back. All right, I found it. It's gear up. I'm going to select that. And I'll come down to here. And I'm going to select gear down, which I think was right below it. I did kind of pay attention to where this wheel was, so maybe it won't take me as long this time to find it. Gear down. All right, let me test it. So the switch is... And of course I got it backwards, so let's do it again. Gear down, gear up. Gear down, gear up. Perfect. All right, so now we've got the timer, the gear. Now let's add the next event. Um, oh, um, let's see. Rates. So I like it to tell me what this is. So I'm going to do the, remember we set the uh, dual rates on this switch of the servo, of the ailerons, uh, the rudder, and the elevators. So um, now I'm going to say position zero. Whoops, let me make sure it's gear, it's switch F. Then I'm going to go to position, uh, position zero and look for high rates. Um, hopefully that's under the category of rates. I don't know if you saw that. Let me do that again. Go here, and you can go to... Uh, select a category. We're going to go to rates 
and then I'm going to go to high rates and select that one. And then I'm going to go to position two, select mid rates and position three, low rates or zero position zero, one and two, but all right. High rates, mid rates. let's try, let's test that. Mid rates, low rates, high rates, mid rates, low rates. All right. I think we're working. So now we've got three set. Uh, we've got, I'm going to check in to see my notes here to see what else we got left to set. I'm going to put, uh, when I, when I bind it, I'm going to bind safe to this switch here. Um, so let's go ahead and set a sound. I think I can go ahead and set the sound even if I don't have it bound yet. So let's switch B. I like to fly with down is in safe mode. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. So switch B. Uh, down is in safe. Let me find safe. All right. I took a little time to find this one. But safe mode. So now I've got position safe mode. Safe mode. Safe mode. Safe mode. Safe mode. Okay. So now we go to... Um, what I generally do on this one is the bottom is safe and the top two are the same thing. So I'm going to pick uh, the words AS3X because I always fly with AS3X on. I can set it to where um, I've got some planes where I've set where the top is no AS3X, the middle's AS3X, and the bottom is safe. But really, I never fly without AS3X anymore. So it, it's just I live in a place where we get a lot of wind and these light foam planes um, <laughs> pretty much always benefit from AS3X mode at least in my experience. So let's find AS3X mode right here, very close to the bottom. And I'm just gonna set them both to say it. And that way, if I accidentally stop on one or the other, uh, it won't matter. They'll always say AS3X mode. All right, found AS3X mode again. Took me a second, but found it. Now I've got safe, AS3X, AS3X. So now I've got a uh, lot of audio set up. I've got uh, gear set up. I've got rates set up. Um, I've set up the timers. I've set up safe mode. So that should be four things set up. Now the other thing I'd like to set up is... Um, and we're, we're, I guess we need to... I guess we need to get into flight modes here in a minute, so I'm not going to set that one yet. Uh, there are all kind of other audio alerts you can do. Um, we're going to get into a couple more later, but for now, I think we're done there. All right. Uh, I think the next step is to bind the plane. After we bind the plane, we're going to get into flight modes, and I'll tell you why I do flight modes on planes with, um, with flaps. So we're going to do flight mode, and then after we do flight mode, I'm going to set the telemetry up, but I need the plane kind of set up to do that. And then I'm going to do some what's called forward programming, and that will give us reverse thrust. So give me a minute. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, we talked earlier about taking the prop off. This is the time if you haven't taken the prop off yet. Highly recommend you take it off. Um, if you have a uh, e-flight plane, you're very familiar with the insides. Uh, this, um, these new uh, receivers, um, in this case it's an AR631, it's right down here. There's a button on it, as you can see right here. And uh, to set up safe mode, you must bind it with that button being held down, which is a little bit of a challenge if you only have one person. I'm going to try to do it, and uh, if you find that to be too much of a challenge, the other option is they still ship the plane with a bind plug. You can look in the manual and uh, learn how to bind the plane with the bind plug. And it doesn't take quite the effort. So let me try to do this on my own with, uh, without using a bind plug and we'll see how it goes. You go down to bind on the plane. I mean on the transmitter. And then when you get to this form, there's a bind button there. Um, I'm not going to press it yet. Here's what I have to do. I have to hold in the bind button on the receiver while plugging in the um, oh. while plugging in the battery. Continue to hold the bind button, and then click bind on this on this transmitter here, and it should be bound with safe mode enabled. So here we go. Here's our first try at that. Hopefully, I can get this on the first try. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. 
all by yourself without using the bind plug. Okay, so I'm still holding the button in the airplane. Put a bind. bind and ESMX 22 milliseconds. Oh, you know Okay, the battery's not charged. Just give me that warning. All right, had to hit this button to cancel that warning. I've got an alarm set up in case you put a dead battery in a plane so that we don't take off with a dead battery. Um, but uh, you obviously see that did work. Um, now let's check and make sure uh, safe is enabled. You can do that a couple of different ways. Um, one of the ways you can do it is you can unplug the battery. And when it comes on and resets, you can hear it check all the servos. If it checks all the servos twice, it means safe is it's bound with safe. If you don't hear the servos, I call it dance. You don't hear the servos dance twice. It means you didn't do it right and you need to do that same step over until you uh, get to where you can hear the servos dance twice. I'll give you an example. All right, I'm gonna plug it back in here. And remember, I still got the prop off. I would, really wouldn't wanna be reaching over the plane like this if the prop was on it. But the transmitter's on, the uh, battery's unplugged, and let's see if it dances what I called twice. And you'll hear the, the, the do that. It went through, yep, went through the cycle twice. That means it is definitely now um, bound with, with safe enabled. Um, now let's set up safe on the transmitter. The book gives you a, um, a way to set up safe by holding both of these sticks into the middle and doing some, doing some stuff. Okay. So there you go. That's why we have the, that is a good example right there while we have the, uh, the prop off the plane. But the other thing we can do now is we can, we can test our, uh, our throttle cut. So I'm going to turn throttle cut on and actually it's not making the, it's not telling me, but we'll test that in a minute. Now we have medium, no medium. Now we have no throttle, so perfect. Now it's a little safer. Um, so let's go in and set up safe mode. Um, you come into here, and now with the plane turned on, there'll be a new menu item called forward programming. It's not there when the plane is not bound and turned on. So inside of forward program, there's a thing that says gyro settings. This is not how the book tells you to do this. It tells you to hold in the sticks and do some stuff, but uh, I just like this way better. I have a little more control. Let's turn on safe select. So here you can see safe select is on. I like to assign it to this switch up here in the corner. And so um, I've already done that because if you remember when we did channel assign, I assigned it to this switch. Safe mode. So now you can see this says safe mode and it says safe, safe mode. Safe mode. AS3X mode. Safe mode. Hmm. All right, don't know why the audio kind of got stuck there, but we'll keep going. Uh, we'll obviously test all this before we fly. Um, but what you see here is down, and it says safe is on. AS3X mode, AS3X mode. Now it says AS3X mode, safe is off, AS3X is on. AS3X mode. The top is the same, all the way down. Safe mode. Safe mode. So the reason I put it down, and I can tell you why, uh, if I panic, safe mode, safe mode, AS3X mode, safe mode, mm. AS3X mode. I'm going to have to turn the radio off and back on to see what's going on there. But here's what I like to do. Anytime I panic, I want to know down is good. So if I'm in the air, this is my throttle cut. Down, the throttle is on. Down. Oh. Well, shouldn't have done that with the thing on, but that's okay. It's recoverable down the gears are are good if you're coming in for landing and then safe mode so if i'm flying along and i can tell you i like to fly like this sometimes if i'm flying along i panic and i'm flying i like to be able to just push down 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 everything's down is good on the on the top edge of the controller so i can reach up press everything down and i'm in the safest mode problem possible i got the wheels down i got safe mode on and the prop is still on. Don't want the prop to go off mid-flight. 
Um, so that's kind of the reason I do down is safe and then up is 3x. Mode. Safe mode. All right, so we've got safe set up now. And one of the reasons safe was easy to set up is I'd already bound, I'd already assigned a switch to the channel earlier in the setup. If not, you could have done that right here. See where it says aux2, auxiliary2. And remember earlier, I went into um, the settings and set auxiliary2 to be tied to switch B. So that's already done and I didn't have to go back and redo it. So safe mode's now set up. Uh, you can always test that by, if you have it in safe mode and you pick the plane up and you turn it upside down, you'll see the, uh, the ailerons, one will go to the extreme one way and one will go to the extreme other way. The reason it does that is it's trying to turn the plane back over to level flight. If you have safe mode off, it will not do that. So to test that, um, you can put it in safe mode, pick the plane up, turn it over, and the aileron should go to far extremes. Put it on AS3X mode, turn it over, and they shouldn't do that. And then you'll know it's functioning uh, the way it was designed and intended. All right, so that covers safe mode. That's set up. Um, safe mode. Now we're going to go to telemetry. And, AS3X mode. And I'm going to go to auto config. AS3X mode. AS All right, in telemetry, I'm going to actually click auto config. I think that's going to go and check all the electronics and s probably add a bunch of telemetry based on what's in this plane. All right, as you can see, it left smart battery, but also added uh, quite a few more telemetry settings here. The one we're gonna to go to is the smart electronic speed controller. Click it twice. When you do, it says poles inhibited. What you wanna do, and I'm not sure where I found this out, maybe a YouTube video, maybe it was in the book, I can't remember. We wanna set the poles to, I believe it's 14 poles. Not 32, sorry, I got distracted. And that means when the when the uh, prop is turning, the RPMs on the screen will be displayed correctly. That's got to do with the, uh, the motor, the electric motor that's in it. You have to set that according to what electric motor you have. You can also do some things here, like you can make this thing when it gets down to 3.4 volts, it's set to alarm, low voltage alarm, right? Uh, you can change the voltage. I'm gonna be flying with four cells, so you set the number of cells here. And you also say where it says display active, and I'll show you what that means. So that means, so we've got all these, we've got a G-force, a gyroscope. There's, there's settings under all these. Um, if you look here, you can say tone when, and this is that alarm that was going off. My, my, my uh, battery is in storage charge, so it's at three point, that's a G2, so I think it's at 3.8 or 3.9 volts. It's under 4.0, which is why the alarm goes off and I plug it in to make sure I don't accidentally take off with a dead battery. But if you look under each one of these, there is definitely settings that you can look at. Um, but that was the one we needed to set for um, being able to um, get the right RPM. And here I'll show you where you can see that. There's the alarm, letting me know that the battery's not charged. Uh, but now that I've got um, telemetry turned on, as I'm on the main screen, if I use the wheel to scroll right, it shows me all of the telemetry that we just enabled. Um, you can see RPM here. Let me turn throttle cut off. Prop is still off the plane. You can see the RPMs over here. So that is the um, that is the reason we set the poles to get the RPM set. All right. Um, Throttle cut back on. Um, <clears throat> you can see the battery and a couple other things. But now we're going to go to this last setting called Avian Programming. This comes with the Avian Smart Receiver. And this is where we do thrust reverse, where we can make the propeller turn backwards and the plane move backwards. Uh, to do that, you have to unplug the battery from this plane and follow these steps within uh, a few seconds of plugging the battery in. Uh, the steps are throttle down and low throttle up elevator which is here and left aileron 
and then the next and then step two we'll say do it the other way we're going to unplug the battery now on the plane and plug it back in so we can demonstrate that all right okay step one hold it five to ten seconds see it switch to step two hold it five to ten seconds and voila, it entered a extra menu. Now this is a little bit confusing. This menu is not controlled by this wheel like everything else on this controller. It's only controlled with this right here. And so um, you can see this little uh, arrow here to let you know which one you're working on. Brake type, reverse. Now I think it's because I already had that set. Um, actually it is because this, this programming is inside the receiver, I mean not receiver, the uh, um, the electronic speed controller, okay? So now we're programming the electronic speed controller. Now I told you I set this plane up last night, which means no matter <laughs> if I reset the transmitter or not, the uh, the speed controller inside the plane still remembers these settings. This is just the, uh, the, 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 the horizon has made it easy for us with the spectrum transmitters. Uh, they've made it easy for us to be able to program that avian uh, uh, electronic speed controller without having to like, you know hook it up to a computer or whatever but this is changing settings inside the plane inside of the uh, throttle the throttle controller which is called the electronic speed control so these are already set from last night but what what it would have been on from default would have been normal brake type and what you'd want to do is if this was your uh, brand new plane setup it would have been on normal you go to reverse. Notice I never use this. I only use this. This uh, right gimbal moves the arrow up and down on what you're ingesting and left and right changes the adjustment. Um, so first thing you do is change brake type to reverse. Go down, change brake force to seven. You can see you can change it. It starts out on no brake force, which I think is either zero or none. Zero. And you change brake force to seven. Um, talk a little about that real quick. Uh, what that means is when you cut the throttle, it doesn't just let the propeller coast in the wind. Like it's, I think it's called tractoring. It doesn't let the propeller do that. It applies enough juice to the motor to stop the rotation of the propeller. I think the reason you do that is because, um, they're trying to stop you from tearing up your plane. I don't actually like brake force because I like that realistic tractoring look of the propeller still turning even if you're not into the throttle on the airplane. But the reason they want us to put that on seven is so that when you cut the throttle to zero, flip the switch to, uh, to reverse the, uh, the motor, <laughs> they want, um, they want the uh, motor to stop really quickly instead of you yanking the motor in reverse when it's still turning forward. So brake force is seven. That's the recommended. Then you go all the way down to the bottom here. Got to keep going. All right. Thrust, thrust reverse channel eight. We'll go back and check and see which switch channel eight's assigned to. Uh, I don't know what this was set on by default. Um, maybe it was set on nothing, but I have an NX8. I have an open channel on 8, so I'm going to set it to 8. If you have an NX6, uh, there's probably maybe you can put it on that secret channel 7 or channel 6 or 4 or whatever is available. You can figure that out and translate it. I'm going to use 8 because um, that's what I set up last night and I've already got it working and know it works. So whatever that's on, you need to adjust that to an empty channel. Then you write stick to exit with save. All right, so that just programmed the ESC inside the plane. It doesn't really matter if you switch uh, this plane to a different transmitter or whatever, those settings stay in the plane. That's why that's kind of a special menu. Let's go check real quick and see where we put that. I'm gonna unplug the plane. I'm gonna go to system setup, so I'm gonna unplug the plane while we do this. All right. Planes unplugged. Then you go to channel setup, channel assign. So eight is on G for me. G is this switch here. So 
it's going to just to keep up everything. This is throttle cut. This is reversing the, this is safe mode. This is gear up and down. Wheels up, wheels down, safe mode, throttle cut. And lastly, um, reversing of the prop. And once again, fly with everything down. That's the way I like to do it. Um, but like I said, I got this one up because that's medium, my... Medium, 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 medium. Oh, I guess I shouldn't cross medium that many times. Halfway point. All right. So I think now we are... Uh, let me think about what else we have to set up. We've set up reverse thrust. We've set up forward programming safe mode. We have set up telemetry on the ESC to 14 poles. So it tells us the right um, RPM of the prop. Um, we've set up audio. The last thing we need to set up now, which is another advanced feature, is called flight modes. And there's definitely um, a reason I do this, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So we go to system settings. And you go to F mode setup. And <laughs> this is where it gets a little interesting. If you remember, I assigned this switch, which is switch D, to my flaps. All right, so this is why I use F mode, and this is definitely not in the book. But F, but flight modes means that settings can be different depending on uh, one switch. You can change several, one to many different settings. I'm going to do this, uh, this as a simple right now and say we're going to make a flight mode for one setting difference, and that is the elevator trim. Now, I'm sure many of you, if you've owned a flat plane, you get it up in the air and you tune it to where it's in level flight with no flaps. And then you switch the flap switch to takeoff flaps or to landing flaps and the plane nose tips up or down because um, you needed different elevator settings. You saw earlier the book recommended 2%. We went ahead and put it in with a 2% elevator correction. But what we're gonna do is make it to where the trim on the elevator can be different for each position of the flaps. So let's do that now. So we go down to switch one and we pick switch D like that, which is the same one as flat that the flaps are on. And now you'll notice as you do it, it says flight mode one and you flip the switch and it says flight mode two and flight mode three. And it says there's a total of three flight modes. Perfect. Now let's see what's under next. I can't remember. Um, I think there's nothing we need to do here. Let me look. Nothing we need to do here. Let's go to previous. And we'll hit back. Now, under trim setup right here, we're going to go to elevator. And see it says common, which means common amongst all the flight modes. Which means when you switch flight modes, nothing changes. That's not what we want. On the elevator, we want that to be flight mode. So I just switched elevator to flight mode. Wouldn't touch anything else. Click back. Let me show you what that does. All right, what that does is flight mode two, I'm gonna flight mode one. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the trim on my elevator, which is oops, which is this switch here. And I don't know if you can see this, but I've set it at negative twelve. When I throw down the flaps, now it says zero. I'm gonna make that one plus six, and then I'm gonna go down to flight, flight mode, mode three, three, which would be landing flaps, and maybe that's a negative fourteen. So now when I switch between flight flaps. Two. No flaps. I got negative 12 trim. AS3X mode. Flight mode two. Now I've got flight mode two. Safe mode. I've got plus six. Flight mode flight, three. Flight mode three. I've got negative 14 trim. So now my trim is an flight independent mode adjustment. Flight mode two. Flight mode three. Why, why I would do this? Well, that way my nose doesn't tip up and down when I switch with, with my flaps up or down. Uh, what I do is I take the plane off, you know, on a, like a maiden flight, um, no flaps, level the plane out, you know, get, you know, three-fourths throttle and tune it to where it doesn't climb or fall. It's kind of a level flight. And then I, I get it high. Don't want to do this with it low. Don't know what the reaction is going to be. I turn on flaps. Um, I see if the plane tilts up or down. I trim that to where it's level flight. And then I turn on landing flaps. 
turn, set the trim up and down so that it maintains level flight no matter which mode I'm in. Now that's not in the book and I think that's a, a big feature, but you know, you got to know how to do that on, on these NX uh, series transmitters. But I think it's pretty important because you'll be able to switch between uh, flaps and you don't ever lose level flight in the process. Um, now, obviously before I fly, I need to go back and start with everything at zero. There we go. I'm not sure why I'm gonna have to work on that switch, I think. I'm not sure why it's giving me fits today, but um, it shouldn't say safe mode every time, see. Yep, now it tells me the flight, flight modes. Mode two. Flight mode three. Now, the, uh, the last thing I just thought of I don't like is I don't like it saying flight mode one and three because I don't know what that necessarily means. So I go in here, go back to here, go to spoken flight mode. On spoken flight mode, I'm going to say one should be, um, let's see if I can find them real quick. So flaps up would be um, in this position. All right, and you can test it. Mm, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Maybe I didn't click it right. Flaps up. Let's try that again. Go to test. Flaps up. All right. Go to this one. All right. Flaps. I'm going to call these takeoff flaps. Right here. Takeoff flaps. Test that. Takeoff flaps. And flaps up. Takeoff flaps. And landing flaps. Landing flaps. All right. So now as we work through them. Take off flaps. Flaps up. Landing flaps. All right. It's time to give everything a quick test. All right. At this point, off camera, I did indeed put the uh, the prop back on. So let's test a few things. As you can see right now, the um, the flaps are down. So let me turn this thing up where you can hear it real good. Pretty loud. Turning 90. All right. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. Landing flaps. Landing flaps. Landing flaps. Landing flaps. Flaps seem to be working. Flaps are working. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. Words are working. Flaps up. All right. Um, Let's try the throttle cut. Throttle cut is up and on. Throttle's not working. It's good. First try here. Let's uh, turn the. We turn that off. Turn throttle cut off. You can hear it breaking. Did you see how fast the propeller stopped? It didn't. It didn't keep going. That was that braking we assigned. Now you see it move forward just a little bit. Let's see if it moves backwards. Well, let's move it forward one more time. Okay, you can see it's moving forward. Let's try moving backwards. Okay, I didn't get that set right, or maybe didn't get that set right. So we will stop the camera and work on that, and I'll let you know what happened. All right, uh, let me turn throttle cut back on. Not sure, something a little buggy there. I went into um, channel assign, reset this switch to G. Seems to be working with the exception of uh, it's the opposite of the way I want it to work. So with that, I'm going to go in here and go to uh, servo setup. And I'm going to switch. It's auxiliary three is what it was called. And I'm just going to reverse three and see what happens. Now let's try and see what happens. All right, turn throttle cut off. Mm. 
until it cuts off. All right, up is backwards. I told you in the air, I like everything down is good. So all the way down, moving forward. All the way up. Backwards. The middle one's also backwards. So down is forward and anything besides down is, uh, is backwards. But like I said, I always operate with everything in the down position. So I'm gonna turn throttle cut back on when I get the plane back in the center of the camera. And that weird noise you hear is the motor braking as we set up in the Avi Avion smart receiver setup. That is the motor braking. All right, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test my surfaces. All right, we've already tested the throttle. And I apologize off camera. I noticed that my throttle cut switch throttle cut off. Throttle cut off. was not saying throttle cut on and off. So I went to audio events and I think I left this one out earlier. I set H to have throttle cut off and on as audio. And now I don't have to be confused. Throttle cut off. Throttle cut off. All right, so now let's test our control services. Uh, moving the stick to the right on the ailerons. I would expect the right aileron on the right wing, I'm gonna call it the right wing if you're standing behind the plane, to go up, which you can see it is. I'm gonna expect the, uh, when I hit left, the left one is, which it is, so that's good. Elevators, I'm gonna, when I pull back, the elevator should go up on the back, down, the opposite, that is. Rudder, right, left, that's working, so we've got uh, good stuff there. Let's check the rates. And how I check the rates is like this. I put them in high rates. High rates. And then I throw the ailerons to a far distance. And then while holding it, I click this, I click them to mid rates. Mid rates. Low rates. So what you should see on the airplane, not sure you will. Mid rates. High rates. Mid rates. You should see the ailerons adjusting, as in they won't go to 100%. And then I can, so I just check my ailerons. I'm gonna check my elevators the same way. Mid rates. And I do see the elevators moving indeed while holding down. And then my rudder, I'm gonna cut the rudder far one way as I can. Watching the plane, I'm gonna adjust the rates. And I should see the rudder move. So I've got my rates working on all control services. I've got my throttle cut working. I've got uh, I've got my uh, thrust reverse working. Uh, we've already tested the flaps. flaps. Landing flaps. Yep. Landing and uh, if you remember, we already tested the trim on the flaps being independent with flight mo modes. Uh, there is a couple things we haven't tested yet, and that is the gear. Um, although we did kind of test it on the table earlier, you didn't see that. We need to test the gear, and so we'll. Do that now and we'll test safe mode. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this where you can see it. I've got safe mode on. And if you watch this right here, if I see it's trying to turn the plane back safe over. Mode. And then if I turn it this way, it flips the other on the other way. So it's trying to turn the plane over because I'm holding the plane upside down. Now let me put it, take safe mode off. Mode. See with safe mode off, that, does, um, that doesn't happen anymore. So we know we got that right. And lastly, we're going to check the gear. And that is a success. All right, I know that's a long video, but hopefully you've learned a little bit about um, safe mode, how to set that up without uh, using the sticks. Hopefully you've learned how to set up audio cues so that you don't need to look down while you're flying and you can check your timers and know your throttle and all that kind of stuff. Um, Let's see. Hopefully you've learned about reverse thrust and hopefully you've learned about flight modes. Thanks for watching.